So first I'll talk about the very first thing I used and how well they worked. So I started with these drag and drop blocks languages for kids. The basic concept behind these is they you drag blocks of code out of a menu when snapping together to make simple programs. There are a lot of these, I've listed some here, but the best ones I used were Alice and Scratch, which I'll talk about in the next few slides. So the first thing I use is called Alice. It's from CMU. It's a free download for Windows, Mac, or Linux. So the, uh, I chose it because the 3D animation looked cool, and objects in the world have methods and attributes. But partly because of that, it turned out to be a bit too complicated as a first language, and I couldn't really get far, very far with it. So I never made great flying airplanes because the code was too complicated. So here you've got a screenshot of Alice. The, in the left, you've got the area from which you drag blocks of code. In the center, the area to actually snap the blocks together. And in the top, you've got the display area, which can be enlarged when running the program. So another thing I use, and the thing I use the most, I use it for a few years, is called Scratch. It's from MIT. E version 1 was a download, version 2 is browser-based. It had a 2D world. Each object in the world had one script plus event handlers for keystrokes, etc. And it was a great first language. It was simple, a lot simpler than Alice, and version 2 had a huge community to share, remix, and write other people's stuff. I built tons of things in it, mostly simple games, but I never made great flying airplanes because everything looked a bit cheesy. So here you've got the Scratch 2.0 website pulled up to a game I made. You can click on explore and view other people's projects. You can play them, look at the code, and remix them. But uh, just going back to my game. You can play it directly from here, but uh, I'll go inside and show you the code. So it's a very simple Space Invaders themed game where you, I guess you try and stop the presents from breaking. I made it because my dad said no more guns. And therefore, OK, let's find a way around that. So you've got four objects in it. Um, all of them have very little code except this object here. And even it really doesn't have much code at all. So it's, this demonstrates just how easy it is to write very little scratch code and have a playable game. Uh, another thing that makes scratch really easy is it's absolutely impossible to make a syntax error. These things won't, just won't fit where they're not supposed to go. For example, with this if statement, an if clause has to be a Boolean operator, which have a specific angle shape and won't fit anywhere else, and nothing else will fit in the if clause. So since I moved up from the blocks languages, several new ones have appeared. One's called Trinket, and they've added you know, a lot of new things, and in doing so, they've lost a bit of the simplicity. And it's cool that it generates Python code based on your blocks, but that's not really helpful to beginners. And then there's Tinker, which looks cool, capable, and simple, but it's not free. So next I'll talk briefly about the things I used in between the blocks languages in Python and then in more depth about how I learned to program in Python. So in between the blocks languages in Python I used several things. I used Logo, but it was a bit boring because it only had turtle graphics. I used some robot battle type things, but I, they require things like trigonometry for basic functions such as movement and targeting. So as a seven year old I couldn't really get very far with them. And I just generally needed to understand programming better. So I started with Python when I was about eight, eight and a half. I picked Python because my dad recommended a dynamically typed language, whatever that is. And it looked like there were lots of courses online. So I started with Python on a 15 hour interactive tutorial from Code Academy. It covered basic Python, but the assignments weren't very challenging, usually just a few lines of code, and there was no graphics at all. 
So here you've got a screenshot of Codecademy. On the left you've got the instructions. In the center you've got the area to write the code. And in the top right corner you've got the console. So in, after Codecademy I used an interactive textbook with exercises from interactivepython.org. It also ran Python in the browser, but it was only Turtle Graphics, so it wasn't bad, but it didn't really grab me. So here you've got a screenshot of interactivepython.org. On the left, you've got the area to write the code, and on the right, you've got the output. Um, I wanted to make games, so my dad installed a local copy of Python with Pygame, and we found some online tutorials. There were a lot of them, but we couldn't really find a good one, because they either didn't have exercises, weren't easy to understand, or were full of broken links, and, or sometimes more come on. And Pygame was a bit complicated for me at the time. So I needed a proper structured course. So there were a lot of them. The best looking one was an introduction to interactive programming Python from Rice University on Coursera. So it was really good. They provided a graphics module called SimpleGUI that's good enough to write fun games, but not too complicated. They provide an online editor called codescop.org, but you could also download the packages and run them locally on top of Pygame. They had challenging assignments of a few hundred lines of code, most of which were fun games, and it covered most of basic Python. It was two parts, 10 hours per week, and five weeks for each part, and there were two more two-part follow-on courses, so about 300 hours of course material in total. got their online editor code sculptor. It's got a built-in debugger, a built-in documentation, and some demos for playing video games when your dad isn't looking. What you've got, what I've pulled up here is the source code for my Asteroids clone, which was the final project of an introduction to interactive programming in Python part two. It's object-oriented and about 400 lines of code. I'll just show you. It can run in the browser or locally. Here it is running as an HTML5 game. So it's quite simple. You just use the arrow keys to move, move up, space to fire. And I decided to add an inertial movement, inertial turning to make it more realistic. In terms of my next steps, I still have the last two of the six parts in the Coursera series to do. Next, I'll fool around some more simply and then learn Pygame. And I think I'll make some Android apps, maybe with Python and Kivi, or as a last resort, Java. <laughs> and I really want to make games with good flying airplanes. I've been at this for five years and I still haven't. But thanks for listening to my presentation, and if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.